Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Hey, welcome everybody to the Thor's episode of the Put on Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, along with Ryan Holmes. And we, as, as, as always, we are podcasting off beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean, beautiful day out here in Southern California. P O R S P R is my Twitter handle. Ryan Holmes is R H O L M 22. Ryan, how are you doing today? Doing good. Big weekend coming up uh, for the Raiders. Prosperity has hit. Anyway, yes, Let's see has. what happens. Let's have no question about it. Thank you, thank you for all the folks who are listening in um, San Diego, California. Um, we got Oakland, California. We got, uh, let's see here, we got New York, New York. We got um, Queens, New York. We also got Toronto, Canada. Listen to the Put On Raiders podcast. So that's always good news. Always always good to, to see where people are listening to the show. Uh, I'll get some questions from the text line. Um, it's in the bio. So if people can ask me, it's in the bio. Too, so you can just go ahead and get that. Ali wants to know, why is everybody linking us to Russell Wilson? Me too. Because <laughs> they're lazy. <laughs> yes. Russell Wilson will not be a, not be a Las Vegas Raider. Yeah, it's a yeah. team that needs a quarterback. They're in the same division. The salary, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's going to get released. But even then, he's not going to sign for pennies on the dollar. The Raiders need to go with a younger option uh, and just move forward uh, with whoever that may be, whether that's trading for Justin Fields and Kyler Murray, whose contract, again, is – is huge or just finding someone in the draft. I, the odds of Russell Wilson being a Las Vegas Raider, I put it at less than 1%. Yes. And then that, that, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We don't, we don't need him to set up his office, you know, in, in, in uh, give him an office in, in, in Henderson. Um, the cost of keeping Malcolm Koontz. So Malcolm Koontz, um, that JB wants to know about that. Um, well, Malcolm, Malcolm Koontz is for 2024. He's making 1.3 last year of a deal. Then you got then you got to sit there and ask, do you want to pick up the fifth year option? I think that he's been playing pretty well. What is the number for a fifth year for that fifth year option? Um, if they did well, that. Well, the good thing is there is no fifth year option because he's a fourth round. Oh, pick. fourth year pick, yeah, or yeah, yeah third round pick. True. So or third round pick. So his contract, he's he has one year left. The Raiders should let him play out on that one year, mm-hmm. and if he does it again, then you pay him. We you don't pay him for a month of production. Let's see what it looks like. One, we don't know who the coaching staff is going to be, who the front exactly. office is going to be. The rush to extend guys, let him prove it. Let him do it again uh, next year and then pay him accordingly to what the market is after next season. But I'm in no rush to extend anyone on this roster at this point. Um, so real quick, um, they want to, uh, fans want to know how how we felt Janoris Robinson did in this ball game. I thought they did fine. He's coming in as a, as a fourth rusher. And they're bringing him in and using him kind of in that NASCAR package where they have four down linemen. Um, he got a couple of pressures on his own against uh, the right tackle or left tackle when he was outside. They moved him inside to, to run some games. He, he's doing fine. He was uh, I saw a lot of people trying to give Champ Kelly credit for him. And I hate to burst their bubbles, but he was signed in August right after the initial cuts. So he was on the practice squad before the season started. So he is not. Uh, technically a Champ Kelly find or gem that went out and got after he became the GM. They elevated him off the practice squad after that point. But mm-hmm. um, I, I think he'll be around again next year. You know, just depth. He may not make the roster next year, but yeah. he, he's playing well right now in the role they're asking him to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Raider fans, they want to give, they want to give, once you're, once you're in that uniform, they want to give everybody credit. They want to give everybody credit. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is like a little bit off the beaten path. But when the Raiders are not in the market, the Raiders are not gonna be anywhere near Caleb Lamb. So, but with they wanted to know, um, what does Miller Moss make Caleb Williams a system quarterback? So, Miller Moss six touchdown passes in the in 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 the in the in the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. You know, it was whatever. But like to me, anybody who devises it, who 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 develops an offense, they 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 don't devise it to make the quarterback have to struggle they they don't make it hard on the quarterback you must make it easier on the quarterback i, I mean look at riley's scoring points should not be a news to anybody in my mind 
They're, they're completely different quarterbacks. That's like saying yeah. Kyler Murray and Baker 100%. Mayfield are the same guy because they played for, for Riley. Like, they yeah, can be different yeah. types of quarterbacks and succeed. Um, no, and I don't even really want to answer that question. <laughs> it's a stupid. Um, let's see here. All 22 now. Let's roll with that. Um, we got Zemir White. Zemir White, let me pull up on my side too, so I can watch it as well. But Zemir White had a really big, a really big day. Uh, I'm gonna text Ryan um, that he's gonna have 145 every week because that seemed to be like a good omen, I guess, if you will. But let's um, let's go over the. Let's see here. Let's go over the stiff arm play here because that this is pretty. Like I, I mean, I didn't even know he had that in the bag real quick, but he he put he put that he put that DB on his behind. Yeah, this is essentially the, the last play of the game that I did after he had the long run. But they're in an offset eye to the left. Um, that's where this play is designed to go. You see Jacob Johnson get up in the hole to find the linebacker. But Zamir White, he has the balance. He's pressing the line, but he he feels that hole in the backside. Uh, great, great job again by Jacoby Myers, who's is a wide receiver, is unselfish. He's going to go inside and block and creates that open hole on the right. You see him balance it. Um, with that vision, and then obviously uses the stiff arm, puts the DB on his back, and then lowers his pads, finishes with power uh, to fall forward for a couple extra yards. So that's kind of what you're looking for in Zamir White. He showed patience. He showed balance. He showed the physical stiff arm, the vision, and then the power to finish the run. It's interesting because, like, I thought, like, in this moment, like, okay, they, they'd be able to, like, they know the Raiders are going to run the football right before that big run that we're going to show now that, like, they, that it would be – they're going to say, hey, let's just force Aiden O'Connell to pass the football. But on this big run, they couldn't stop him. Um, they, they couldn't stop the Raiders' um, offensive line. They couldn't, they couldn't get any penetration. And he really rips that um, the, that, that big run with um, Jacob um, Johnson in front of him. Yeah, and this is, this is essentially they're in the under three minutes. They get the ball back first down, wins the game. The defense knows they're running. So you can see the Chiefs kind of pack everyone inside – this is actually a good call because this is supposed to bounce outside. And if you watch the, the right side of that line, everyone's down blocking. And then this hole is actually made by Jacoby Myers, who's able, again, to get the safety. He gets him turned uh, to his left. Jacob Johnson kicks out the, the corner, and that creates that alley. And it actually – Myers actually gets should get credit as well because the middle linebacker, Nick Bolton, runs in uh, to the DB that Myers is blocking. So he kind of gets two for one. And then he's out the gate because there's no secondary help because everyone's up near the line of scrimmage trying to stop the run. And then Zamir White hit 20.66 miles per hour on this run, which was the fastest run for a, a running back in the NFL this past week. So the speed we heard coming out of Georgia, we, we haven't seen this from Zamir White in two years, either in training camp, preseason games. Um, but he came to play the last two weeks in the the arrow's pointing up for Zamir White as a future ball carry. Now it's just hold on to the football, which he's done a good job of the last two games when he's been asked to carry the mail. He's, he's I mean, I gotta give him a lot of credit. He's been playing pretty well, pretty well um, in the absence of of Josh Jacobs. And I think in the press conference today, um, AP talked about like you know even when Josh gets back, like he's gonna get some burn, which makes sense. I mean, which makes sense. I mean, he he he, he clearly said though that. Um, that he is the number one, no number one back, um, Josh Jacobs when when he returns. So we'll see about um, we'll see about that if that happens this week or not. Um, Trevor Morig making making a nice play in the back of the end zone for PBU. Yeah, this is my favorite defensive play from the game, and I know they scored, I believe, shortly after this. But um, this is just great coverage, great instincts. They're in cover two. And they actually start in a, in a three by one. And then you see the motion, number one motions across the formation. And then so Trayvon Merrick has the deep half. And you kind of see the new number one receiver kind of works into the flat there and then tries to run like kind of a, a delayed slant. So you see him turn. And Nate Hobbs is actually the hook defender. Nate Hobbs gets in front of him initially. And then Nate Hobbs kind of floats into the flat. And you see the receiver try to run a, a slant behind him. Morig comes down, takes that away as the pressure is getting to Patrick Mahomes. And then soon, uh, Nate Hobbs actually gets back in position in that hook curl zone. And then Merrick turns around, and he he's looking for guys coming across the field into his zone because he can see the one and the two to his side of the field are short. 
uh, and actually sees that guy coming across the back line, gets his head around, and then makes a play on the ball, separates the ball from the receiver by playing through his hand. So I just thought it was a great play by Trayvon Merrick, stuff that doesn't really show up in the stat sheet, but he saved a touchdown right there twice on the same play. Um, that was, I mean, just like that, that was, that shows a lot of skill to be able to, you know, he looked like he was at the reacting to, um, number, number 11 at, at the, at the goal line and then to be able to drift back and make that play is like pretty impressive, um, speed and reaction footwork, all that stuff like that for Trayvon Morig. So good job by him. And didn't show panic to go, to go, to go, you know, to grab the receiver. Either like I like I like the I like the, I like the fact that he didn't he didn't do that as well. So um, Raiders defense obviously kudos great job by them. They scored twice, which is like <laughs> you can't. I mean they scored once in the game. That's great. You said you, you scored twice. Um, that's even better. I'm not sure. I mean that's probably not sustainable um, going forward. You don't usually get that many defensive <laughs> touchdowns. Um, um, it, it, in a game, but like uh, for a capper, what do you want to um, you what would you want to say about this defense? I I, I know we talked about them um, playing like you know basically a cover for like cover two, cover four, stuff like that. Um, what were your thoughts when you saw them online? I saw them on all twenty two. I was expecting to turn it on and see a bunch of new stuff, exotic stuff, just the way Patrick Mahomes look confused, and I turn it on and it's the same stuff they've been running for the past two months. And they they literally are just going back and forth between cover three, cover four, depending on which defender they're going to bring down, whether it's buzz or cloud coverage uh, and cover three. And then in the second half, they played a little bit more cover two. They're not playing a ton of man coverage, but I think the communication and there was a play that I almost put online that I didn't um, early in the third quarter where you can see Diablo and Spillane basically passing off receivers yeah. instead of running with them. Um, and you can kind of see that underneath the communication across the back end it has been really good. And they did finally remember when they played the Giants and I'm like, why are they like showing, you know, sim pressures where they're spinning out into cover two? Mm -hmm. They finally did it again. The first time I've seen it since the Giants game, they did it in this game with Tyree Wilson coming out uh, and then actually being like a middle hook defender. And then he makes the tackle in the flat. So another mm -hmm. way to use Tyree Wilson's athleticism, but this team has just gotten down the fundamentals. They're playing the same four or five coverages for the most part throughout the whole game. Uh, and they just become really good at it. So I'm not going to call them the Legion of Boom, but kind of similar to that where everyone knows their responsibilities and they're all doing it at a high level. And clearly the pass rush has taken a huge step forward and that's really helped this defense. When Malcolm Coons has come alive, Janoris Robinson, Adam Butler inside, Tyree Wilson inside, and then obviously you still have Mac. So they're running a ton of games along the defensive line, they're taking advantage of teams, you know, trying to slide the protection of Max Crosby. So then they have one-on-one -on, -one on, the, on the other side of the line of scrimmage on the backside. And they're, they're doing a ton of things to create opportunities for the rest of the pass rushers on this team. And they're winning right now. So as long as that pass rush can, can stay hot, the coverage on the back has been really what well, been really good. This week is going to be a huge challenge for this defense because Indianapolis runs a heavy amount of RPOs more than the they're the most in the league and the Raiders haven't really played no. other than maybe Miami to an extent a team that's going to run this much RPO and I, I do think on the, when I watch the secondary it just seems like it's just like they're on a string like they're all playing they're all playing together um they're all doing all they're playing maybe the, the same you know two or three coverages but they're but it allows them to play it faster they um they're 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 right in the right spots so and you know, so here's a question. Um, I thought I think it was Dante Hall said it, but um, what he said that um, right now the Chiefs are struggling because Patrick Mahomes won't take the profit. Like he won't take this. He's trying to make big plays. He's holding the ball longer. Like, did you find that in the, in, in 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 this game? I didn't see that either. I was like, no. I mean, like, I, I didn't. I think that's like kind of like. I think there's times where he does that, but I didn't see in this game where I was like, oh yeah, people are wide 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 open underneath, but nobody around him, and he and he refuses to take that play and trying to make a big play down the field. I didn't see that. No, I think, and you saw the frustration from Travis Kelsey. They had to keep the running back and then the tight end in a lot to chip. Yeah. and kind of help on those edge rushers, and then they're getting out into the routes late. 
Um, the old Patrick Mahomes was slinging the ball down the field and throwing for 350, 400 yards, four touchdowns. Like the Chiefs haven't been that for two years, ever since they've had yeah. Tyreek Hill. They don't really have explosive guys that can get down the field. Obviously, they missed have, not having like Sky Moore, you know, McCill Hardman. It's like some of the speed options on that offense weren't there this week, yeah. but they didn't have, they don't have guys that can win down the field. So that's what they've had to do. I, I do think I will give Patrick Graham credit for this. They are running the same you know, let's call it four or five coverages, but they're disguising them all pre-snap really well. So they'll show you two high and then they'll drop down into three buzz. They'll show you single high and then they'll play cover two. So like, mm-hmm. it, it's really hard pre-snap to figure out what they're doing because it's always, he's changing the picture post-snap on almost every passing situation. Yeah. And you know, if they set, if they had, they weren't moving any bodies. So like, I, don't, I, don't, I know some people were saying that, you know, Andy Reid should stick to, should stick to the run. There wasn't a lot of that you know, offensive line yeah. wasn't moving anybody. Yeah, they, they were moving anybody. So I'm not. I don't, I don't think that was it. I think just I think you know just sometimes you just gotta give the silver and black team um, credit. And sometimes you gotta do that. And I, I think Van Roten was a Van Roten who um who, who cleaned who cleaned Chris's Chris Chris Jones's clock on that play. That's a Steve Wisniewski play. I like that. I like plays like that. Play to the whistle. Parham, Parham got him once too. Chris Jones had, had a little bit of difficulty on a couple different plays. He won yeah. his fair amount. But, yeah. Well, but I, won, I, I do think with uh, Andre James. So, uh, yeah, on the on the Patrick Graham front, I do think like quarterbacks are having to think now because what they see pre-snap, they know they're not getting that post-snap. But then, yeah. can they guess right what they're going to get post-snap? And, and Clearly, he's in the minds of the quarterbacks they're playing right now because they're having a hard time figuring out what the Raiders are running. And then when the pass rush is getting there in two, two and a half seconds, it, it's really hard. Um, yeah. Especially with the way they're, they're they're in coverage. The cornerbacks have been pretty sticky, too. So I was looking at, looking at, the, looking at the Colts' stats going into this game. And also also want to give um, props to um, Jacoby Myers for just being just a tremendous blocker. Like this dick, it is like he, he, you can tell he loves that. I was looking at the Colts stats, watching some Colts some coach film, and like they really are going to be a team. The reason why this is going to be such a big battle, I think Max Crosby talked about it on his podcast as well, is that they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop with the run. Like they're going to continue into the fourth quarter. If if you get a bunch of stops, it doesn't matter. Like you have to be up three scores for them to really give up on a run. I don't see the Raiders going up three scores with their offense like, <laughs> against the Colts. But I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll score. Maybe they'll score a couple of defense touchdowns again. But that's the that's the challenge this week, right? To be able to, um, to be able to stop the run against this team, who, you know, who were they have some guys in, on the interior who who can really move bodies. Yeah, I think the challenge this week is going to be on the, those linebackers, Spillane, Diablo, and let's call it Hobbs, who's going to be playing the nickel a ton because. They're going to be running RPOs the whole game. So they have to be disciplined on the backside of these these runs to not vacate and come down and give up the slants and the balls behind them for big gains. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on the guys on the front side of these plays to hold up and stop the run. So uh, the Raiders are going to be challenged because, like I said, they haven't faced a team that's going to run the amount of RPOs here. And then Gardner Minshew can, can move a little bit. Like He can get out and create some plays with his legs. This Colts team doesn't have a lot of guys that are going to win down the field, a lot of big explosive plays. Yeah. But Michael Pittman should be back. He's going to be a good possession receiver underneath. Um, jo- uh, Downs, the young the young rookie, can work out of the slot, has a little bit of speed, and then they'll take some shots with Alec Pierce. Yeah. Uh, but this Raiders defense has been really good at containing and keeping a, a lid on those explosive plays in the passing game. So they're going to have to tackle because, like I said, it's going to be RPO City. You're going to see slants. You're going to see balls, you know, going right by the linebackers into the middle of the field. And they're going to have to, when those are completed, they're going to have to make tackles and keep them to short gains. And then, obviously, you still have to figure out how to stop Jonathan Taylor. I think Zach Moss was rolled out today. Yeah. Um, so people not playing, but they're getting the right tackle. Brent Smith back. Who's Pittman, missed quite is back. A bit. Pittman is back. He was cleared yeah. today. Yeah. So Pittman and Smith. The right tackle will be back, and that should give them a jolt. The Colts haven't played well uh, the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And then defensively, I, I think this Raiders team, the way they're playing defense right now, I, I think they're going to be able to hold down this Colts offense. The question is, can the Raiders offense score enough points against the Colts uh, to win this game going away, or is this going to be a game that's going to be tight late in the fourth quarter? 
Does um does A does Aiden um does Aiden O'Connell know how to throw against cover three? You might see a couple of those cover three plays this week. Uh those looks this week. The I, film on Aiden O'Connell this week was <laughs> atrocious. He's um, bad. He's bad. We'll we'll see what it looks like. Again, another road game where he just didn't show up, and now we're got another road game in front of him. The Raiders have to run the football and they have to play defense because I, I just don't see Aiden O'Connell right now being able to go out there and sling the ball 35 times for 250 to 300 yards and win this game on his own. It's not going to happen. And Michael mm-hmm. Mayer is out as well. So. Yeah. So, I mean, um, for, for farming, if a fathering him was trying to get involved, I mean, some of those passes were just horrible to him. It's like, dude, he's wide open. Just give him the ball. Like, it was. They they could not be in a bad situation, and I did I did I did hear on Michael Lombardi's podcast that um, it was like five hundred thousand was like the reason why J- Jared Stidham isn't a Raider anymore. Like they won the nickel and diamond for that play and it was that amount of money, and and they gave what they gave their boy um, Brian Hoyer <laughs> four and a half guaranteed four and a half guaranteed. So I mean that's crazy. That, that, that's crazy as far as that goes, but. Um, it's a tough game. I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm not in. I'm not in love with the matchup. I do think the Raiders. Um, th- I, I don't see a lot of points in this ball game, though. I mean, this is th- 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 this score could be very similar to what they saw or what you saw last week, right, Ryan? When 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 the Raiders faced the Chiefs, like twenty to fourteen, stuff like that. I think that, I, I think for sure it'd be a low scoring ball game. I think the Raiders. You know, they're going to have to figure out how to block Grover Stewart. He's a big run stuff for inside. You know, DeForest Buckner is there. Um, they got the kid out of Vanderbilt, Deo. I don't, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a second year player that's playing well. I think it's number 54. And then, you know, at linebacker, they've moved on from Shaq Leonard, but EJ Speed's playing well. Zaire Franklin's having a career year he's uh, good. as an inside backer. As much credit as Raiders fans give Robert Spillane, deservedly so. Zaire Franklin's probably played better this year. He's had a really good year for the yeah. Colts. Um, Kenny Moore is still an elite slot receiver. You're going to take advantage of this team. They're going to have to win outside Myers, Adams, Tucker, because you can beat the corners. They have rookie corners over there with the Colts. And then obviously in the, in the back end and the secondary, there's some younger players there. So the Raiders, if they can get some explosives down the field, some of these play action shots, get Trey Tucker involved. We didn't really see them mm-hmm. take those shots, throw the ball down the field, to Devonte Adams, you know, let's, let's throw a couple of go routes to him and just see if he can get some pass interferences or anything. He got one last week, but I, I think for the most part, they're going to be able to scheme up the running game enough. They're going to have to stick to it. It might be, you know, one yard here, two yards here, you know, punt. And then, you know, if you stick to it and you get into the third and fourth quarter, like they did last week, maybe they can break some runs, but I think they match up pretty well with this Colts team, um, especially with the way the Colts are playing right now. Yeah. I mean, and maybe they can get to the edge on some of these runs. Cause I mean, when you got, when you got Grover and, um, and DeForest Buckner in the middle, maybe, maybe that'd be a hard, a hard, a hard, um, hard trudging through that, um, through that. Um, Zach, Zach Moss is not playing. Um, they do have Trey Sermon, but I do think one, one of the guys who I was watching um, the Colts a couple of weeks ago, and it was, it's got this guy Ty. This guy Ty Goodson has some speed, so he's he's definitely a, a guy who they like like to sprinkle in on third down sometimes. That if you're not paying attention to, he he can break one. So, um, and they have had some long runs, so you want to be able to do that um, as well. I don't really love their excuse me their, their, their tight end room. So if you can, I mean, like listen, the first game back for uh, Michael Pittman. Hopefully, um, you know the Raiders can um, can D him up. As as far as as far as that goes, but this is all about two teams who are going to run the football and play defense. Um, and but the one team has a quarterback who can improvise a little bit, where the Raiders don't have a um improvisal type quarterback uh, in the stable, if you will. <laughs> no, he's as I was told on Twitter yesterday, he's not. <laughs> Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, or Dan Marino. I, I had a Raiders fan actually throw that out there as far as like, we can't say he's not that guy. And the mobile quarterbacks can win in this league. And we're not saying that they can't win in this league. They need a lot of things. It's 2023. It's not 1995. It's not 2003. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything has to go right for, for Aiden O'Connell as far as the pass protection, which I think has held up pretty well this year. I know a lot of Raiders fans think it's trash, but 
they're in the top 10 in pass block win, win rate. PFF has them at number 10. Take what you will of PFF, but they still have them in the top third of the league as far as an overall offensive line. I, I do think the Colts offensive line is where this game is going to be won, spe- specifically by the Raiders defensive line because yeah. they – the edges, you have Bernard Raymond, who's the second-year player at left tackle, and you have oh Wade gosh. Smith back from injury. Malcolm Kuntz and Max Crosby can win this game by themselves. They can wreak havoc, get in the backfield, uh, hold up in the run game, and then you know create some interceptions or maybe a forced strip sack on a fumble. We'll see. I, I, I do think the Raiders win this game, though, when it gets to the prediction section. We'll, we'll, we'll oh. get the number there but i am going to pick the raiders to win this game only because i think it helps me too because i have tickets to the broncos raiders game if 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 that game means something you may see me in las vegas come early january yeah so that'd be good to see that'd be good to see i am i i I just i mean i i don't know if i they just have to get something out of the offense if in a passing game i I, if if they get anything out of the passing game i would feel like if you're watching that game you just see a couple just like two or three passes, you know, 20 yards or more. Um, that's where we are at this state of the Raider passing game right now with, with Aiden O'Connell there. He's 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 be, he's beyond horrible. So if they if they can get that going, um, then hopefully maybe um, you know, we, we can see the Raiders do it. And like with the playoffs on the line, if they need a touchdown to win this game, and let's say they're down, you know, 17. 17, 17, whatever, whatever score would make it, um, you know, whatever, 10, 10 to 14, whatever, they need a touchdown instead of a field goal. Like, you know, in the second half, like, if he's really struggling, are they just really, they're really, like, resigned to never playing Jimmy G ever again? Because, like, the playoffs are on the line at this point. Like, I mean, like, if everything falls right from everybody for, for like, around the league, like it did a couple of years ago, and the Raiders are in a situation where if they just went out, they could possibly, you know, you know, make the playoffs. Like, do you just sit here and just like watch Aiden O'Connell just like throw the ball into the dirt, like the whole the whole game? Like, it's it's I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it's something to think about. I mean, in relief at least. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying star Jimmy G, but in relief. I would say at this point, the chances of that are unlikely. If they didn't go to him in the Vikings game. Yeah, that's true. And they didn't really go to him last week when Aiden O'Connell didn't complete a pass after the first quarter. I don't see them changing changing up and doing it now. I do think there there is an advantage here. If, if the Colts are going to play the Gus Bradley cover three and they've got rookie corners out there, you essentially got one-on-one outside for most of the game. So, you're gonna hopefully we see some of those comeback routes where you've you challenge them vertically and they get a comeback route, maybe some out routes. Aiden O'Connell really good at throwing the ball towards the sideline with timing, take some shots down the field. But it, the predictability of the play calling has been a big issue too, because they're they're running the ball almost every first down and they're running a lot on second down to get to third down. They can't convert third downs. So they're gonna have to find a way to avoid getting to third downs and they're gonna have to create some plays in the passing game to do that the second and 10 second and 15 screen to the running back that hasn't worked all season like they just got to get rid of those plays and then when they get to the red zone throw the ball in the end zone i'm tired of turning on the l22 bubble screen bubble screen the wide receiver on first and goal from the 10 and then it's run on <laughs> second and goal from the 12 and then it's third and goal from from the nine and they don't score and they kick a field goal so <sighs> they have to throw the ball outside against these these young players of the Colts to have success. And you saw the Falcons kind of do that last week. Kyle Pitts had a big game. Drake London had some nice catches. Um, Just avoid the slot. If they can avoid Kenny Moore in the slot and then work against the other guys in that back end, there's a chance for them to have success. The middle of the offensive line is going to have to hold up because they're going to have to figure out how to block those interior rushers. And they still have Quiddy Pay and Samson Ekubon on the outside who, who are younger athletic players that have a chance to get the quarterback, but nothing like the Raiders haven't faced already this year. So I think this, hopefully it's indoors. Aiden O'Connell has played in the stadium before with Purdue in the big 10 championship last year. He's due to have a good game. He's had a couple of clunkers on, on, on the, on the road, on the road, especially on the road. He hasn't had one yet. Yeah, I mean, no, he no, had no. the game against the Chargers at home, but like he's in a dome. So maybe that'll help him. But 
Zamir okay. White, the way he's running the football, the Raiders yeah. should come out with some play action and take some shots early in this game. Try to get a score or two on the board and not yeah. just try to grind it out and get a field goal here or there. Like the the Colts are going to have to, they're going to stack the box and try to take Zamir White away with the way he ran the ball last week against the. Uh, that's assuming Jacobs doesn't play, which right now it sounds like it's it's, it's very air and it's a game time decision. Even if he does play, I would expect him to split carries because it doesn't sound like he's anywhere near 100. percent yeah, I mean, it sounds like to me, it sounds like also too, like, I mean, like if, if you figure if you get one, I think if you get like 160 from Aiden O'Connell on the touchdown, that might be good enough to do it. Like, you know, with the way they with the way they, with the way they're playing defense, with the way all that stuff is going up, they could just do that. That that seems like that would be a really good, you know, a really a really good start. Uh, if you if you if you want to if you want to make um you want to make Ryan mad, all you gotta do is just uh, rush three or run the ball on second and second and goal. I mean, that's where if you feel if you want to second and goal from the nine. If second from the nine. I I just it. take the field goal. Yeah, seriously, down. seriously, it's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy as far as that goes. All right. Um, before we before we do predictions, real quick, did you like um what do you feel about AP's AP kind of snapping on offensive play callers as head coaches a little bit, talking about like you know. How many times have we, the Raiders won in Kansas City with these with these quote unquote gurus, stuff like that? Like what? Are we, like he's he's really kind of sticking his claim to this to this job here um, with the Raiders. I don't think he's taking a shot at him. I think he wants the job, and he's like he said, his resume's on the grass. He doesn't have a lot of other accolades to fall back on in his coaching career. He does as a player, obviously, but. Yeah. Uh, as far as a coach, he has never been in a position like this at the collegiate or the NFL level. He was a high school head coach, but I think AP is doing everything he can. And he he's trying to persuade Mark Davis and his thinking. And it's tough because if they do go with a rookie quarterback, you're tying that rookie quarterback to a defensive minded head coach and a defensive you know the defense is carrying this team right now, so we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't think he, he's taking a shot at anyone, but I, I do like that he's fighting for this job and he wants this job. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, it's there for him. It's there for him. Um, I think. I mean, it's there for him. As, especially if they if they went out and go nine and eight. I mean, from and he goes six and three as a head coach, like you kind of the, the conversation is over. Like you know what I mean? Like as far as that goes, you do your due diligence. You do what you have to do, but after that, you know, he 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 he's been good enough to where I would say he has to he has to be a guy who you would he would you would definitely hire and keep. Um, and we'll see what happens as far as far as the as far as the rest of the staff goes. Um, prediction time. What are your feelings about this game? Um, do the Raiders come out of Indianapolis with a victory? I think they do. I think they go into Indianapolis. They're, they're riding a high right now. They've played two. I mean, they put up 63 on the Chargers, and then they, they went on the road and won in Kansas City. Um, they're playing very physical. They're playing very fast on defense. I, I think this defense can give the Colts a ton of problems. And I think the offense does enough here. I think, like I said, I think we're going to see some play action shots early in this game. I think Trey Tucker, you know, maybe throw the ball down the field to him. I think him or Adams gets in the end zone in the first quarter. Um, the Raiders can add a field goal. And then, you know, with, I, I see them taking a 10 point lead at some point early in the first half of this game. And then that defense holding on, getting a turnover. I'm not going to predict the defense to score in this game, um, but maybe they get two or three turnovers, set the offense up for a couple of field goals. I think they win this game, I'm going to say fairly easily. I know that's it's tough to say as a Raiders fan at this point of the season, but just the way this defense is playing right now, I don't see the Colts going out there and putting it up you know, 25, 30 points on them. I'm going to take the Raiders fairly comfortably 23 to 13. 23 to 13. Um, let's see here. I'm thinking, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's difficult to go on a road to keep, to go on a road and keep, keep keeping teams under 20 points. So I think the Raiders will have to score like 24 points to win the game. So 24, 21. Um, I don't, I don't know if, the one thing he hasn't done is turn the ball over the last two weeks. I think that's going to be like, I think at some point the Raiders have to get a turnover. And I think Aiden O'Connell will turn the ball over at least once in this game. I think it's just hard to keep playing with, with the athletic pass rushers like we would pay and with um, Ekubon, they have, they have, they have, um, they have guys up the middle who get to the quarterback. I think at some point the, the, the Raiders might face a turnover. Um, 
in in, in this game and, and they'll have to come back and get their own. But I think I think the Raiders find a way to win um win the game um you know to 24 21 um if you will maybe maybe Carlson from deep late who knows or maybe you know that, that a miracle circle catch by um Renfro like like, 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 like a couple of years ago who knows hopefully he doesn't let it go through his hands like he did in the uh fourth quarter last week on that slant I went back and watched that and like Hunter Hunter's got to catch that ball yeah Hunter is Hunter is his his the days are the the days are coming up short for Hunter. He's he's on the way out, folks. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to tell you. And like you know, and I and I, and I taking a shot. Like you can also if, if they're great, if they're great, if, they, if, they, if the Colts have a great slot um slot corner, you can use you know um Tucker to just get him out of the just clear him out anyway. So the the, the opportunity opportunity should be there for the Raiders to win this one, um folks. As far as that goes. All right, Raider Nation. Anything else you uh want to? I would add two quick things. I think if the Colts are still going to be a primarily cover three team, that's what the Raiders are primarily on defense. So Aiden O'Connell sees cover three in practice every day. Yeah. So hopefully he's had plenty of reps against it this season to prepare for this game. And I do want to add the, the rhetoric that a lot of people are just saying the Raiders should just screw the running rule, ignore it, hire Champ Kelly, hire Pierce now. Let the why? league discipline them. Like, why give up fines? Why give up draft picks? And the, to those same people, and I tweeted this this morning, if the Raiders didn't go through the process like they did the last hiring cycle, Champ Kelly wouldn't even be with the Raiders right now. Yeah. Um. Obviously, his prior relationship with Dave Ziegler probably helped him get that job, but they never would have interviewed him, most likely for the GM job and him being a finalist for it last time. So there's no rush. Teams aren't lining up. For the minute this season ends, to go interview Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly, they're not. I would assume they're probably not going to make a decision on their futures until they know what the Raiders are doing. So I don't think going through this process is going to cost them either candidate if they really want them. Yeah, that's what I'll say too. So yeah, so I hundred percent. Like I said, who are you? Who are you bidding against? Who are you bidding against? Like you're not bidding against. He wants to be here. He doesn't want to coach another team. Like there's no reason to like even like I mean almost to his detriment he doesn't even care about any of that stuff he just wants to be the Raiders head coach let him be the Raiders head coach after you go through your due diligence first you know do that first all right all right Brad Nation take care uh, I got my, I'm gonna have to buy the ticket this week for um for for YouTube just to just watch these last two games because nobody nobody gets this game in the nation um outside of, outside of, outside of Nevada <laughs> so between the Colts so. All right, Ray Nation, take care. All right, take care.